A fellow who wrote a bunch of mathematics textbooks told me that some years ago math teachers decided to teach students to understand how math works instead of just teaching them to memorize tables, formulas, and rules. The teachers believed that this new approach would help more students to become interested in and proficient in math. The teachers developed new lesson plans and methods of teaching, and a whole bunch of new math textbooks were written. Math teachers thought they were making progress, but then a reactionary element started lobbying for a return to the old methods. Eventually, the reactionaries won, and according to the author I spoke with, math education in the U.S. is now predominantly taught the same way it was taught back in the days of log cabins and one-room schoolhouses. I asked the textbook author whether there was research to show that either the new or the old method resulted in more students mastering math. He said that the research was inconclusive. Apparently, each method worked for some people, at least to some extent. Does it matter, then, which method is used, I asked? And if it doesn't matter, why did the reactionary forces work so hard to change back to the old ways if the new way worked just as well? The math book author told me that teaching math wasn't what the reactionaries were interested in. The reactionaries had a political agenda, and so did the other side. The reactionaries believed that people should do what they are told and not ask questions. So, kids should just memorize what the teachers say and not try to figure out what makes math work. The progressive math teachers thought that kids should ask questions so that they will learn to think critically and independently because that is how they should think about everything, not just math. At its root, the math book author told me this was a struggle between religious fundamentalists who believe in revealed truth and obedience to authority on the one side and independent thinkers who believe in open inquiry and individual freedom of thought on the other side. The struggle, he said, is the same struggle that is going on between people who think kids should be taught biblical creationism and people who think kids should learn about science and evolution. Why don't the reactionaries want people to ask questions in math and science? Because asking questions can lead to discoveries, like evolution, that threaten fundamentalist religion. Fundamentalists, instead of trying to reconcile their religion with scientific discoveries, have decided to simply tell children and adults not to ask questions. The textbook author told me that he had himself learned math the old-fashioned way, by memorization, which might make it seem that it doesn't matter how we teach math. Except that at some point he realized, as all mathematicians do, that you can only go so far if you don't understand what you were doing. So he started asking questions. It may not even matter whether most kids learn much math. Our population is growing, so we will probably always have plenty of kids who learn enough math to keep society functioning, even if we also have a lot of people who don't know much math at all. But it does matter whether people learn to ask questions. People who ask questions have a chance of remaining free. People who don't ask questions usually find themselves oppressed by governments and religions.